Today's episode of Quick Dick is brought to you by Zach's Building Group in Hag. Zach's Building Group, whether you're looking to keep machinery just out of the weather but still cold, inside and still warm, maybe you're looking to build a greenhouse, maybe you're looking to wash some stuff inside, or maybe you're just looking for a place to keep your hay and cattle inside of, Zach's Building Group are the people you need to talk to. Zach's, built into the fabric of the Saskatchewan agricultural landscape. Check them out in Hag. Quick Dick McDick coming to you from Saskatchewan here with our second part of Hey Let's Hay. Now on our first part, we learned all about alfalfa and how we cut it and how we bale it. But cutting it and baling, it's only part of the job. There's another big part of the job where we're gonna have to haul the hay back to the yard so that when we bring these beautiful girls back to the yard here this winter, they're gonna have something to eat. I know, right? Now it's not just hay that we haul home, we haul straw home too. And straw, of course, as you learned when we were combining, is the stuff that comes out of the back of the combine. And we use straw as roughage, like a fiber in some of the cow's feed, and we use it for bedding so they've got a warm place to lay and have their baby calves in the wintertime. Now we bale them both with a round baler, and we haul them exactly the same. You know what the best part of hauling round bales is, right? We get to use Blue Ball! <laughs> hey Blue Ball! Now, of course, before anybody hauls anything, we get to do a pre-trip on Blue Ball, which means we inspect the truck. And then we're gonna go out and haul the bales home. Now, I'm gonna show you hauling straw because I didn't have my drone out when we were hauling hay, but I'm going back to last fall when we were hauling straw, hauling hay. We do it all the same way. We do it with blue ball, we do it with a flat deck, we do it with a couple of tractors. So let's head to where the bales are. And once we get to where the bales are, we use a tractor with a fork on the front and a fork on the back, and we just start picking all the bales and loading them up on the blue ball. And then I get to show you how I keep in shape because the next part is we're gonna park the tractor where the next load of bales is and I'm gonna run all the way back to Blue Ball. Let's go for a run. Then we haul the bales back home and it's time to unload them.
And then depending on where we're going to use the bales and how we're going to use them, they get stacked in different shapes. Some of them get stacked as wind guards, and then we slowly take them down and put them out as bedding. Hay gets stacked in some places. Sometimes we stack it across the road. Sometimes we'll stack it way over there. And it's important to split them up so that if you have a lightning strike or something catches fire, you wouldn't lose everything all at once, right? So that's round bales. But there's two kinds of bales that I'm going to show you that we're doing here. We just looked at a round baler and how it works. The second kind of baler I'm going to show you is a square baler. And I'm about to show you how a square baler works, and I recorded this last year, so you'll notice that my beard is significantly shorter. But I can't stress this enough, you guys. Square balers are very dangerous. That is why I'm taking you on this tour, so you never need to go close to them to figure out how they work. You've got a whole bunch of rotating parts, spinning PTO shafts, and you have got to stay away from them. I do this with a camera and another person working. I mount it with magnets and a few different fancy things. Do not, I'll say it again, do not try and do any of this at home or get near a baler at any point in time. Okay, now like I said, I didn't have my drone out when we were haying much this year, but I do have some drone footage from when we were making straw last year. So I'm gonna show you how square baler works using straw. Okay, so how does this thing work? Basically, the straw gets picked up here into the pickup. And then you can see these fingers on the top here. They drag the straw over into the side chamber. And you can see here there's a plunger going back and forth. And as they drag the straw in, the plunger pushes it back out the back of the baler. The bale's gonna get twined in here, but what we're gonna do is I'll have my camera in here when I'm bailing so you can see how it works. So this is super hard to show what I did the best I could with my camera, but how it works is there's two big needles that come up where the end of the bale's gonna be and they've got twine in them and it comes up and there's a couple of hooks and a wipe arm and basically this thing ties two knots in the twine in like less than a half second. It just goes to chunk and you got a knot and it's starting on your next bale. So here's what it looks like. And then the bales just come out the back here in a nice little square. Pretty neat, eh? Let's go see it in action. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm feeling a little nostalgic today. This is all kinds of fun. It's an old 4020 and a Massey baler and a drone and music, and this is great, but now the real work comes. We get Mrs. Rogers in the tractor. Then we get the big kahuna on the trailer. Then me and Double R get down on the field and we start chucking square bales around. So obviously it's not just me involved in all this stuff. There's all kinds of people helping out all the time and it's uh, it's a big team effort. It's a big team effort in the summertime so that when it turns into this in the wintertime, we've got enough feed kicking around so that we can keep these girls fed, right? Hey, this sure was fun. I hope you guys learned a lot about haying and baling and how we haul it and what's all involved with it to make sure that the cattle got enough feed for the wintertime. And 
leave a comment. If there's other stuff that we do on the farm that you don't know about that you'd like a video made about, well, maybe drop a comment and I'll, I'll see what I can do. It's uh, getting a little bit late here and it's harvest time, so that's why I've been slow uploading all the time. But thanks as always for stopping by. If anybody's kicking around the uh, Big Iron Show down in uh, Fargo, North Dakota here, coming up from the 12th to the 14th, I'm going to be at the Mandaco booth. Uh, taking a little break from harvest to come down and say hi and drink some uh, American beer with you. So uh, make sure to stop by and say hi to me there. And uh, I'll tell you what, I'll catch you fine folks hopefully next week, same time, same place. Maybe on a Monday, maybe on a Wednesday. You just never know when it's going to get done during harvest here. But thanks for dropping by as always and catch you next time. QuickTickMcDick.ca Yeah, sure, you can buy stuff here, but you don't have to if you don't want to. Do whatever you want.